Right now, the streak begins. Dangerous, hot, and humid temperatures start today. The 90s are here, and they are not letting up. Chris is tracking a week's worth of alert days. They came in illegally. They have to go out. Ice raids are starting today in 10 major cities nationwide, preparing to target more than 2,000 recently arrived migrant families, most without criminal histories. What that means for us here in the Madison area. Whether it's at work or whether I'm walking around, if I start to have a pity party, I remember this young man. And from a ripple to a wave, we'll introduce you to the little boy who's inspiring some of the biggest names in our local community, even after his death. How you can help his family today. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. It's 6.30 in the morning on July 14th. It's a really hot day outside already. I know I spent most of the day yesterday at the art fair on the square, and I was really Ooh. feeling it. <laughs> I bet you were. I spent most of yesterday inside. <laughs> It was Packing, <laughs> getting ready uh, to head out of town to do a camp, but I'll weather tell you what. Camp. Yes, weather camp. It's coming up, but it's going to be hot either way. It's going to be hot there, too, so I had to prep myself for that and just uh, mentally get ready. There are a couple places across the upper Midwest that do have heat advisories right now. It's not super widespread, but you see parts of Siouxland do have heat advisories. Parts of the Twin Cities have heat advisories as well. We'll watch probably some of those increase as we go throughout the week. I think the bigger story is the increasing dew point as we go through today. Right now, as you step outside, it's actually not all that humid. Most of the humidity is off towards the south and west. You see those dew points into the upper 60s and low 70s. Here's our dew point comfort meter. We're starting out kind of around the bad hair day range, but as we go throughout the rest of the day and this week, we're gonna watch the dew points increase to the probably beyond the uncomfortable range and well into the tropical range. It's gonna be border line don't talk to me as we go through the rest of this week right now again the dew point in Madison right around 60 the temperature 64 the lower dew points of these cooler temperatures are actually brought to us by a nice north wind coming off of Lake Michigan right now but that will change going through the day no showers or thunderstorms around at the moment but some across the upper Midwest that's where some severe weather will be possible across northern Wisconsin today but from then on out it's all about the heat and the humidity in the week ahead. I think I'm gonna practice my don't talk to me. It's okay. Don't talk Let's to me. Let's practice Chris. that one. All right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Anytime. Well, new this morning, the Trump administration and ICE officials are preparing to target more than 2,000 recently arrived migrant families starting today. These families have already been ordered by a judge to be deported. Most do not have a criminal history. The raids will be conducted over multiple days through July 18th, and they will include collateral deportations, meaning undocumented immigrants who happen to be on the scene but aren't the intended target could also be subject to detention. They're going to take people out and they're going to bring them back to their countries or they're going to take criminals out, put them in prison or put them in prison in the countries they came from. While large scale deportations are not uncommon, most don't receive this kind of publicity. This one is getting pushed back from cities with large immigrant populations like San Francisco. Two hours away from us here in Madison, many Chicagoans are also upset. Passionate protesters took to the streets in Chicago Saturday, joining those in cities across the country. Undocumented immigrants like Gerson Quinteros are on edge, speaking out this morning about how they feel. Sheriff's deputies are also sharing advice for immigrant families. I feel like scared every day. I don't know what to do, but I know that with my community, I'm in strength. Keep your doors shut and uh, ask for a search warrant. And if they don't have it, well then don't open the door. Officials in Los Angeles estimate there could be close to 1 million undocumented immigrants in this country alone. And local law enforcement here is refusing to help federal agents with any immigration arrests. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers retweeted out a warning about the raids last night. He said, quote, ice raids will be taking place starting tomorrow, meaning today from ACLU, know your rights. No Wisconsin city is on the list of the 10 U.S. cities expecting ice raids. The closest city to us is Chicago. Back in Los Angeles, the summertime specialty is for sale with a special purpose. Dozens of kids and their parents are teaming up this weekend to sell lemonade, but these stands have special meaning. 
for helping people coming from like Mexico and different places to have like a safe place in the United States. To actually support kids and parents and moms and dads who are in the U.S. detention camps right now. The parents say it's important to teach their kids compassion while also keeping them informed about what's happening in our country. The city that never sleeps, known for its bright Broadway lights, is now back in service after a massive citywide power outage shut down New York City subways, traffic intersections, and even entire skyscrapers Saturday. Good Samaritans turned into traffic cops and police themselves were out in full force. The outages were caused by a transformer fire and affected 60,000 Con Edison customers. Broadway theaters also lost power, as we mentioned, so performers made the streets their stage. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio is currently running for president, but reassured New Yorkers from the campaign trail. I spoke to our police commissioner, our emergency management commissioner, and my chief of staff at City Hall. Everyone's coordinating. 42 years ago, on this exact date, the 1977 blackout plunged all five boroughs of New York City into darkness. This time around, when the lights eventually went back on overnight, you could hear people cheering across the city. Around the state of Wisconsin, a three-year-old Milwaukee girl is dead, shot after a possible road rage incident. It happened on the city's north side just after 8.30 Saturday morning. Officers say the suspect shot at the car with a mother and her four young children inside after the two cars nearly collided. The suspect led officers on a chase until he eventually lost control and crashed. He tried to run away but was eventually taken into custody. Milwaukee police are now outraged. We have a three-year-old dead. Every one of you should be just as angry and upset about this as I am. You could see one of his fellow officers tearing up behind him as well. Police say the other three children in the car were ages one, two, and four years old. They haven't released the identity of the little girl, girl or that suspect just yet. More local news now. Nearly one year after losing their son, a Madison family is keeping his legacy alive this weekend. Megan May describes her son as a kind, sweet, and a light in everyone's life who wanted to be a police officer so he could help others. The May family started the group Dominic's Ripple to raise money for police causes. Not only did Dominic want to be in law enforcement, but he loved dogs, so their first goal is to raise $50,000 for a canine unit for the Madison Police Department. We want people to remember Dominic. We don't want his life to end at the age of five. We want his story to continue. And so through Dominic's ripple, his story can continue. Today from one until five o'clock, Dominic's ripple is holding its kickoff event at the Kiva Sports Center in Middleton. Also today, Art Fair on the Square, one of the most popular events here in Madison for more than 60 years, continues. If you didn't make it downtown yesterday, you have until 5 o'clock today to check out the art from ceramics and photography to sculptures and jewelry. The event is organized by the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art and serves as its primary fundraiser. The fair opens at 10 o'clock this morning. And it's the final day for another popular summer event on the Isthmus. Fet Day Marquette wraps up its four day run with one last family, one last round of family events, local food plus beer and wine. The festival is now in its 14th year. Today's events run from nine o'clock this morning until 10 at night. Fet Day Marquette is sponsored each year by the Willie Street Co-op. It is free to get in. Looking ahead, get your fingers and your wallets ready. Prime Day 2019 starts tomorrow. This year, the name is a bit misleading, though. The annual day of savings will actually last for two full days, July 15th and 16th. And also this year, Amazon workers are planning to strike. According to Bloomberg News, the six-hour work stoppage will happen tomorrow at Amazon Sh Shakopee, Minnesota facility. The workers there are demanding better pay and working conditions, but Amazon says it already offers competitive hourly rates ranging from $16.25 to $20.80 an hour with benefits. Amazon Prime Day is the annual shopping event exclusive to Amazon Prime members. Time now, 639. Badger fans, you can start planning which games you'll be jumping around at later this week. Single game football tickets go on sale at 830 tomorrow morning. The Badgers home schedule includes some huge Big Ten matchups, including welcoming the Michigan Wolverines to Madison on September 21st and Iowa on November 9th. No, no Illinois this year. I'm an alumni of there. You'll have to play Austin Champaign. The first game at Camp Randall this year is September 7th against Central Michigan. The Badgers kick off their season on the road at South Florida just a little more than a month from now on August 30th.
And if you missed the cheesy action last week, mark your calendars. The Wisconsin Cheese Curds will be back in action this Thursday. We're really talking about the Madison Mallards, who changed their name for the three Thursday home games this month. You'll see the same players, though, just wearing different uniforms. But let's be honest, the real draw here is the food. New cheese curds options will be for sale at every single concession booth, so be sure to come hungry. Well, time now is 640, and it's feeling a lot like summertime baseball weather today, and it will for quite some time. Here's a live look outside this morning. Chris is tracking a week's worth of alert days in your full first alert forecast just ahead. Well, we've been talking about the hot weather and it is time to dress the part. Shorts, dress shorts being brought out today as we are talking about heat that's going to be lasting for a very long time around here at least. 90 degrees, we hit it yesterday. That's likely the start of a streak that is going to last for quite some time. A lot of folks made it towards 90. Milwaukee hit 90, Kenosha 92, 91 as you work your way over towards Mineral Point. And it's funny that we mention all the 90s yesterday because across the eastern half of the state, get this, things are a lot cooler than they were just 24 hours ago. In fact, Manitowoc, 14 degrees cooler. Here's why we have a northerly wind coming in off the lake right now. That's bringing in some drier air. That drier air allowed the temperatures to cool off a little bit more overnight. So we're starting out around 64 this morning as opposed to the 74 that we started out around this time yesterday. Dew points also lower. They're more so in the mid 50s as you work your way towards the eastern half of the state. But the oppressive dew points do show up just towards the west. So the dew point comfort meter is going to go well into the uncomfortable 
zone as we go throughout today, even though we're starting out right around the bat hair day range. But the humidity will be certainly on the increase. Here's why. Notice the winds coming out of the east initially, but as we go through time, we're talking tonight and into tomorrow. These winds will turn around and we're going to bring them out of a southwesterly direction. That southwest wind is going to be ushering in all of the higher dew points that you see to our south and west. That means the humidity just will continue to increase as we do go throughout the week. Some showers and thunderstorms throughout the Midwest right now, though none of those impacting us. A large weather maker across the country right now, though a still tropical storm Barry turning across parts of Louisiana as we speak. And so here he is bringing in a lot of the showers and the thunderstorms. Here's how things are going to play out with Barry going through the rest of the day. Look for more showers and thunderstorms to spread really throughout the Mississippi River Valley. That should stay well to our south. Our chances for showers and thunderstorms are going to be very minimal. Look for temperatures topping out around 90 degrees today, and then we'll likely see those temperatures top out around 93 as we move into tomorrow. You factor in the humidity, it'll feel like at least 100 degrees on each and every single day in this forecast alert week continues, Christina. Alert week. <laughs> alert week. Can That's... you not read the graphic? <laughs> Clearly says going. alert day. You cannot use it. Alert day going on for a whole week. Okay. A whole 10 days. Okay. I just something as living in Wisconsin, I'm not going to complain about because I know in six months we're going to be, be wanting this. It will be a totally okay. different story. It's yes. just important to stay safe out there. Yes, it is. Thank you, Chris. My pleasure. Well, researchers in Wisconsin, in Washington state rather, are studying the brains of altruistic kidney donors. These are people who donate one of their kidneys to a complete stranger. Professor Abigail Marsh at Georgetown University is studying the brains of those donors to better understand why some people are simply more altruistic than others. You're actually able to see an enlarged area of the brain that is associated with their, their altruism. That's right. They, they um, seem to have just a little extra matter, a little extra material in this region of the brain that we know is really important to producing an empathic response. There's a structure in the brain called the amygdala that in people who are psychopathic is smaller than average. And in altruistic kidney donors, it's larger than average by about 8%. Nearly 100,000 people in the U.S. are currently waiting for a kidney transplant. And ahead in our 7 o'clock hour, we'll hear more about this growing group of do-gooders making life-saving donations. In the meantime, you can head to waitlistzero.org slash donate for more information about how you can donate. Time now, 647, pushing back against possible changes. As Instagram considers getting rid of its like button, kids who use it weigh in on one of the world's most popular apps. That's just ahead on News 3 Now this morning, Sunday.
In an effort to combat bullying, Instagram is now going to let you know when you're being mean. The app is rolling out two new features, comment warnings and a restrict option. The comment warning is meant to detect offensive or borderline content as a user types and then prompts the user to reconsider before posting. The restrict option will allow users to hide comments from specific users without notifying them that they've been muted. Well, you might have heard by now that the social media giant Instagram plans to hide the number of likes that users get on posts. It's just one of several steps Instagram is considering to fight bullying. Pew Research says about 72% of teenagers use the app. Gail King spoke to five kids between the ages of 12 and 18, all daily Instagram users who had a lot to say about these possible changes. We wouldn't post as much because it's like, what are you posting for if you're not going to get no interaction with your phone? <laughs> I guess that's the main thing you're going for. Right. Yes. Although the amount of likes has like a really big negative effect on people, it also brings up some kids' self-esteem. Like if I have a post and it gets under uh, 200 likes, I just delete it. Likes are very important to this group, and getting those likes requires work. Tell me this, what's your process in deciding what pictures you're going to post? Take, Does a lot of thought go into uh, what you post? Yes, yeah. I take a 50 lot. of them to get one good one. You yeah. take 50 pictures to get one picture to post on Instagram? Yes, same. That's yes. how you got to do it. Same? Yes. Yes. Same. <laughs> same? Yes. And what about you, Gabby? I've taken 200 just to take, like, the one good picture. To get one good picture? Mm -hmm. Show me your good angle, show me your bad angle. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, try to, do. like, <laughs> stick out my neck a little more and, like, tilt my head down. I think my good angle is anything above, like, the chin. Anything From, above like, the chin. Below the chin, you get, like, that double chin. <laughs> you don't really like that, but when you're looking up, you're this good. This is amazing to me. You, Allison? Um, when I'm taking a picture with my friends standing up, I need the left side. What kind of pictures do you notice that get the most likes? The ones you put the most effort in. Portrait mode, the enhancement, white balance, flash, love, <laughs> HDR, all that stuff is important. <laughs> What's the difference between guys and girls? Me and my other like girlfriends, we go out to have like a whole photo shoot. We look at the, for the time of day, we try to get the right lighting, and guys will just post like a really bad selfie and get <laughs> a thousand likes. I think girls have higher standards though than guys mm -hmm. overall. That's pretty much the same in life, Jeff. Yeah. And girls have I think so. higher standard. <laughs> we asked the head of Instagram, Adam Masseri, about the kids' reaction. The teenagers we talked to were adamantly opposed to this because they said the number matters to them. This could cost you business. Do you think about that? Worry about that? We think Care about, about that. We think about it, but we're going to make decisions that mean people use Instagram less if we think it's better for people's well-being and if it resonates with enough. You're getting a true representation of what people are really living and doing on Instagram? No, because there's a lot of people have their Instagram account and they have their fake Instagram account, their Finsta. Mm -hmm. Ever since that that's become a trend, people are more gravitated towards Finsta to put things on there that they don't want everyone to see. My mom always told me that how I act is like a representation of how like she acts or how she raised me, so I kind of just like based it on that. Mm -hmm. You don't want to disappoint her, you're saying? Yeah, I don't want to disappoint my mom. Mm -hmm. I like your mom. Yeah. <laughs> how many of you have been cyberbullied? Okay. Everyone has been cyberbullied. Cyberbullying has so many different meanings. When I think of cyberbullying, I think of like pictures being posted, comments, like mean comments, threats being thrown around. It's just like uncalled for and just mean and heinous. I try to ignore it, but the problem with cyberbullying is that you can't really escape it. Yeah. Because you can't escape your phone. People have the most confidence online. You have someone saying, you're so ugly, you look like this, but at school, they won't say anything to you. <laughs> so I confront them at school. You do. And I'm like, why'd you say that? But at, in school, they're just like, oh no, like I didn't mean that. You said it though. It may have been online, but those were still your words. I instantly blocked them because I'm wasting my time confronting them, and they're wasting their time just focusing on me. So have you ever blocked someone, and they know that you blocked them, and then you run into them? Mm -hmm. And yeah. what is that like, that awkward. experience? It's like? awkward. It's awkward? Yeah. Yeah, very. It's even <laughs> more awkward when you have class with them. You have to be with them every day for the rest of the school year. Why would people be upset if they're blocked? It can be such a powerful thing where it's like, okay, we hate each other now. Instagram is testing a comment warning feature using technology that can flag unkind comments and send a message to the user. We say, are you sure you want to say that? Do you want to undo that? We don't block you. We just say, hey, this looks like it might be unkind. Do you want to undo it? Before I send it or after I've sent it? We're looking it? at both right now. 
Do you think that's a good thing? It's not gonna stop cyberbullying altogether, but I do think that there are definitely people out there who would take that into consideration, mm -hmm. for sure. You think kids are just meaner today? People have more access to be mean to you. So you can go to school, people are mean. You can be online, people are mean. And you don't know what that person is going through at home mm -hmm. or anywhere else, so people should really, like, really think about what they're saying. Instagram's policy requires users to be at least 13 years old. All of the kids Gail spoke with had accounts before they were 13. The head of Instagram says age is tricky to monitor, but confirms they are working on a technology that can better estimate people's ages. Well, time now, 6.56, and there's a full hour of news ahead on News 3 Now this morning Sunday. Next, we're running through the day's top stories, but first, here's a preview of what's to come on an all-new For the Record. Good morning, everyone. I'm Neil Heinen, and today on For the Record, we will preview this year's Forward Fest. Eight days, more than 40 events, more than 5,000 attendees for Wisconsin's largest technology and entrepreneurship festival. It's the 10th annual Forward Fest, and we'll talk about what's new and what keeps people coming back with three Forward Fest board members, Laura Strong, Hilary Stowes Krauss, and Tiffany Mark. And that's coming up at 1030 on News 3 Now. Right now, a growing number of people are sacrificing their own lives to save the lives of complete strangers. What's behind the trend of altruistic donations? From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. 
Good morning, everyone. It's July 14th. I'm Christina Laurie. We'll get a check on weather with Chris in just a second. But first, here are three things to know to get your day started. The Trump administration and ICE officials are preparing to target more than 2,000 recently arrived migrant families starting today. These families have already been ordered by a judge to be deported. Most do not have a criminal history. The raids will be conducted over multiple days through July 18th, and they will include collateral deportations, meaning undocumented migrants who happen to be on scene but aren't the intended target could also be subject to detention. The city that never sleeps, known for its bright, bustling Broadway lights, is now back in service. After a massive citywide power outage shut down New York City subways, traffic intersections, and entire skyscrapers Saturday. The outages caused by a transformer fire affected 60,000 customers. 42 years ago, on this exact date, the 1977 blackout plunged all five boroughs of New York City into complete darkness. This time around, when the lights eventually went back on overnight, you could hear people cheering in the streets. And get your fingers and wallets ready. Prime Day 2019 starts tomorrow. This year, the name is a bit misleading, though. The annual day of savings will actually last for two full days, July 15th and 16th. And also this year, Amazon workers are planning a labor strike. According to Bloomberg, the six-hour work stoppage will happen tomorrow at Amazon's Shakopee, Minnesota facility. The workers there are demanding better pay and working conditions. Amazon says it already offers competitive hourly rates ranging from $16.25 to $20.80 an hour with benefits. And you might want to stay inside and do some online shopping with the forecast that Chris has in store. Yeah, that's right. Things are certainly going to be very warm out there, Christina. So we're breaking out the shorts today, and you'll probably want to keep those out for quite a while. It's funny that we talk about the warmth, though, just because things are cooler than 24 hours ago. That's all thanks to an easterly wind coming off of Lake Michigan right now. It's bringing in a little bit of some drier air and that drier air allowed those temperatures to cool off just a little bit. So we are waking up into the mid 60s in a lot of spots. But check it out. Our temperature in Madison has already jumped to 70. We're at 72 in Mineral Point and eventually we're going to watch a southerly wind take over. So it is going to get even warmer and more humid in due time. The dew point right now at 60, which oddly enough is not too bad. A dew point of 60 is right around that bad hair day range. It's noticeably humid out there, but it's not terrible. Well, our dew points will be increasing likely into the uncomfortable and tropical range as we go through the rest of today and through the week as a whole. Check out these high dew points all across the upper Midwest right now. Those are not producing any showers and thunderstorms for us at the moment, and so we will likely be staying dry, though I can't rule out an isolated shower or storm this afternoon. But of course, the bigger story is going to be that stretch of 90s coming up in our long term forecast. Christina. Thank you, Chris. The search you at 10 o'clock this morning. The man went missing around 9 o'clock Saturday morning just below the Prairie de Sac Dam after trying to save his three kids in the Wisconsin River. The sheriff's office there says the kids swam out too far but eventually made it back to shore with their mom. Alliant Energy lowered the dam flow to allow divers to search for more than eight hours yesterday. A first alert traffic note, a major construction project will finally officially end this Wednesday. City of Middleton engineers say wet weather pushed back their work on University Avenue. Construction between Park and Cayuga Streets was originally scheduled to be completed at the start of July, but heavy rainfall led to missed work days. The road will be fully open to traffic this Wednesday. And a reminder for Beltline drivers, westbound traffic is going to be limited to two lanes all weekend long from Fish Hatchery Road to Seminole Highway. One lane is being shut down while crews continue their work on the bridge over Todd Drive. The DOT says you can expect delays during the day. The ramp onto the westbound Beltline at Fish Hatch will also be closed until 6 o'clock Monday morning. Time now nearly 605 researchers in Washington are studying the brains of altruistic kidney donors. These are people who donate one of their kidneys to a complete stranger. Kenneth Craig got a look at the science and introduces us to two women connected by the ultimate gift in a way they never imagined. As a mother, firefighter and paramedic, putting others first is a way of life for Joe Kimmerly. <laughs> So it wasn't a difficult choice when she decided to donate one of her kidneys to a total stranger. Why would you not? I've always been a helper. I always love people. Why wouldn't I? Joe is one of just a few hundred people every year who become altruistic kidney donors. 
that really is an extraordinary form of altruism in a lot of ways. Professor Abigail Marsh at Georgetown University is studying the brains of those donors, including Joe. And you can see that something very similar is happening. To understand why some people are simply more altruistic than others. And she says the images are telling. You're actually able to see an enlarged area of the brain that is associated with their, their altruism. That's right. They, they um, seem to have just a little extra matter, a little extra material in this region of the brain that we know is really important to producing an empathic response. There's a structure in the brain called the amygdala that in people who are psychopathic is smaller than average. And in altruistic kidney donors, it's larger than average by about 8%. Joe, who lives in Washington State, donated her kidney to Tressa Dombrowski in New Jersey. I wonder how often you think about it, the fact that, that somebody willingly, out of the goodness of their heart, gave you their kidney to save your life. Mm -hmm. I think about it all the time. I think about it all the time. And I give thanks for it all the time, too. The married mother of two has an autoimmune disorder and needed a second kidney transplant after her first started to fail. When you go through an illness, a serious illness where your organs are failing, um, you don't ever take that for granted again. It gives you a whole new perspective on life, really. This is actually one of our first photos together. Tressa was able to thank Joe in person when they met for the first time three years ago in Washington. It was an instant friendship. It is so amazing. I think we've seen each other six times now. I've flown back there a few times. She's flown over here a few times, met all our families. She is family. It was absolutely surreal, but I felt such a connection. The kidney brought us together, but that was just the beginning of our story, really. It was the gift of life that just keeps giving. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Washington. Nearly 100,000 people in the U.S. are currently waiting for a kidney transplant. For more information about donating, you can head to waitlistzero.org slash donate. In other health news, before you grab that cup of juice this morning or pack that soda for lunch, you want to listen to this. A new study in the BMJ Medical Journal says just a small glass of juice or soda a day can increase your overall risk for cancer by nearly 20%. All it takes is about a third of the typical can of soda. And ladies, the increased risk for breast cancer is even higher at 22%. But if your sweet tooth does get the best of you today, it is Sunday after all. Starbucks is offering a special drink and today is your last chance to get it. They're calling it summer in a cup in the form of a tie dye frappuccino. Each 16 ounce serving has, are you ready for this? 400 calories, 60 grams of carbs and 58 grams of sugar. The Brewers were out for redemption last night, hoping their pitchers could hold off homers, unlike their Friday night loss to the Giants. We pick it up in the eighth inning when the Brewers took the 3-2 lead. They added one more, but Jeremy Jeffress gave up two in the ninth. Then in the bottom of the inning with two on for Ben Gamble, he hits one deep to right field. It falls fair and the crew wins 5-4. With the series now tied at 1-1 one and, one, and the Brewers a game and a half behind the Cubs in the NL Central, the crew and the Giants face up one more time this afternoon. First pitch at 1-10. The Packers start training camp in less than two weeks, but until then, the players, including Aaron Rodgers, have some time to kill. So you can find them in beautiful Lake Tahoe, California, at the Celebrity Golf Tournament. This is really picturesque. Check out Aaron Rodgers throwing some footballs into the crowd before his round. On the course, look at this beautiful approach on hole 13. Rodgers is now tied for 22nd. Meanwhile, Burlington, Wisconsin native Tony Romo is almost as talented on the links as on the football field. He's leading after round two. Play there wraps up today. And over in Akron, Ohio, Madison's very own Steve Stricker had a tough round three at the senior players Saturday. He was tied for first at one point, but after running into some trouble on the eighth, trying to get out of the trees, he would bogey that hole and eventually fall behind. After four bogeys and one birdie on the back nine, Stricker shot a 73. He's now in a three-way tie for third, taking a look at the leaderboard. But Stricker still got a chance. He's only two strokes behind the leader, but definitely a bit crowded field at the top going into round four today. Time now, 7:10. If you're planning to hit the links for yourself today, go prepared. Here is a live look outside where we're expecting the heat index to rise into the triple digits. Chris has your full first alert forecast next.
Well, when it's hot, sometimes there are things you do about that. Perhaps wearing shorts, dress shorts, as you do the weather outside instead of the full suit. That's how we are going to be beating the heat today as we have another day of that heat and humidity coming our direction. Let's take a look at some of the highs yesterday that made it into the 90s. Once again, Madison hit 90 for the third time so far this year. Milwaukee made it towards 91. Kenosha to 92. And I think this is just the start of several days where we will see temperatures in the 90s. Now this morning starting just a little bit cooler. That's because we have those winds coming off the east and the north and east. That's bringing drier air off of Lake Michigan right now, which is helping to keep the air a little bit drier, which is why our temperatures were able to drop. So check out some of these dew points, especially near the lakeshore into the upper 50s and low 60s. Meanwhile, near the Mississippi River, those dew points are into the upper or upper 60s and low 70s. That is where the dew point is downright uncomfortable. We're getting into that tropical range at this point, and by the time we get towards, say, the middle of the week, the dew points are just going to be in that don't talk to me range. Christina has been practicing that today. Watch what happens with the winds. Here's why our dew points are going to increase as we move through tonight and into tomorrow. Our winds are going to become more southerly and southwesterly to the south and west. That is where the dew points are a lot higher than they are right here in town. So you're going to be dragging in that higher moisture content into the air and then pulling that into the Madison area. At the same time, you're also going to be bringing in more heat from the west too. No showers and thunderstorms over us right now. There are some showers and thunderstorms across the Midwest, though. The bigger story weather wise across the country is what is left of what was Hurricane Barry, now Tropical Storm Barry. Watch this storm continue to bring more rainfall to the Mississippi River Valley and parts of the Tennessee River Valley as we go through today and into tomorrow and towards the middle of the week. If you're going to be headed down that direction, yes, the weather will remain unsettled likely throughout Thursday or Friday. Dress things won't be as unsettled, but it will be hot. Temperatures around 90 this afternoon. There will be a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms will cool down into the 60s. Tomorrow, look for those highs right around 93, and that will continue going through the week ahead as well. The heat index will likely be close to 100 degrees at times, if not reaching 100 for a lot of folks. So definitely know that when the air temperature is not in the triple digits, it is going to feel like the triple digits pretty much all week long, all 10 days long. So we have alert days each and every single day. No heat advisories right now, but I wouldn't be surprised to see at least some of those uh, being issued our direction as we go through the week ahead. So yeah, I think I think you fell asleep with the copy and paste function on your. Computer. I may have, I may have, and I know you told me before I came out here the fun fact that Michelangelo didn't like to paint, so he wrote a poem about <laughs> painting. Well, I don't like the heat, so maybe I'll write a poem about the heat. We'll see. Do you like how I share all my Snapple real fun facts? That with was you? just great. I know. I was like, huh, that's nice. <laughs> Doing the people's work. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. My pleasure. Well, we've been asking you to share your morning with us. D Dan Schulte posted this on Facebook. Dean Schulte, sorry about that, Dean. Thanks for sharing with us. What does your morning look like? Take a picture, post it up on our Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag MyNews3Morning and we'll share our favorites right here on the program. A nine-day event that celebrates sailing is now underway in Madison. The Commodore's Cup kicks off day three later today at the Memorial Union. Teams consist of sailing members and non-sailing members competing for points in a variety of different races, with the winner getting their team and names inscribed on the mighty Commodore's Cup trophy. The event celebrates sailing and the social aspects of the club as well. It's also about getting to know your community members, the other people that are a part of the club meeting new friends, um, people with shared interests and everything else that goes along. It's just as much a social as it is a, uh, as it is a competition. Each night features a different social event, starting with a themed dinner that teams put on. The entire competition culminates with the Commodore's Ball, which is a formal dance held in the Great Hall inside the Memorial Union with a live band playing. At the ball, the awards are handed out and the winners will be announced. Time now, 718. Healthy, happy, and screen free. It can be a struggle for parents to keep their kids entertained all day long this time of year. That's why we recruited some help. Alyssa is here from Sanford Profile to talk about some easy ways you can get your family moving this summer on any budget. Thanks for watching News 3 Now this morning, Saturday.
You know, we've been talking about temperatures, but I do have to say it is a beautiful day out there. Crystal blue sky behind me, a few clouds on the horizon. This is going to be really the name of the game. The temperature in Madison right now, 70 degrees. Winds are calm as well. Dew point right around 60. 68, the temperature in Janesville. Monroe at 69 right now. Mineral Point at 72. We don't have any showers or thunderstorms over the area right now. There are some across the far northwest throughout the upper Midwest talking. We're talking parts of southern Canada and into extreme northern North Dakota. I don't believe that will have an impact on us at all. So plan your day with the sunshine. Yes, things will get very warm throughout the day. Look for highs right around 90 this afternoon with heat indices close to 100. Christina. Thanks, Chris. With the 4th of July behind us, we're now in what's considered the dog days of summer, the time when parents look for ways to keep their kids active, healthy, and away from screens. That can be a struggle. So Alyssa Nineman is here to share a few ways to help with your keep your whole family healthy this summer. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. So I think first, people love to talk about food. It's morning. I'm hungry. Oh my I gosh. know. Yes. So let's talk about what we have on the table before. before yeah. Us. Um, so, I mean, the typical thing to do in the summertime is go on vacation with your family, summer road trips, um, stopping at gas stations, stopping at restaurants. Those can, so here we have muffins and cheesecake. Those can be upwards of 600, 700 to 1300 calories at your gas stations, your, your and they look so restaurants. I know. Um, so here uh, I just created some healthier versions. This one is 140. That, those are going to be 160 calories each. Um, so we just like to touch on different ways to healthy versions of everything. How do you lighten them up? What are some easy ways? Yeah, so protein, looking for some healthier recipes on Pinterest, YouTube, um, even Google. We have a couple of recipe books in store too where we can talk about, you know, this replacement for this sugar can help you save 100 calories here or almond flour as opposed to regular flour. That'll help you save, you know, a couple calories too. And does this next necessarily sacrifice taste? No. You know, if you're trying to get your kid to eat it. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Okay. Um, I fed those to my nieces and nephews before, and they were so ecstatic that there were chocolate chunks in there, and they were like, oh, my God, this is so good. <laughs> okay, so you, you've tested out. Yes. Oh, great. gosh, yes. Oh, yeah, all the time, all the time. <laughs> and then besides food, there's so many hours in the day. Kids aren't yes. at school, and they can be exhausting. I mean, I feel yeah. it. I'm only 25, and when <laughs> I spend a day around kids, I'm exhausted. Yep. So what are some tips for things that parents might not think of to do with their kids this right. summer? Right, get them outside, um, get them involved, take them to 5Ks. I know that we often think to enroll in 5Ks. Enroll your kids in them too, have them run alongside you. Is that safe uh, for them? Yes, okay. yep, absolutely. Um, most 5Ks have rules. They'll tell you if you can bring your kids, if you can't bring your kids. Look for the ones that are a little bit more family friendly. Um, Dane County Farmers Market, let them go pick out some of their favorite vegetables, get them involved in recipes. Uh, there's Art Fair on the Square this weekend. We have Mallard's Games, there's Forward Soccer now. So there's so many things to, uh, to get your kids involved, like Monona, all that stuff. We're lucky to live in such a great community where there are a plethora of options. So yes. we don't want to hear any complaints. There's plenty <laughs> of stuff to do. Right, right. <laughs> so thank you so much for talking to us, Alyssa. Yeah, it's thank you guys. Getting, picking your brain, getting your ideas. And for we'll sure. have those suggestions up on our website, channel3000.com. And we have a list of a calendar, all the events that are happening in the area. So people awesome. have so much to do. Oh my gosh, from. so much stuff. Yeah, it's a great place to go. <laughs> thank you, Alyssa. Yeah, thank you guys. Well, there's a half hour of news still ahead on News 3 Now this morning. Sunday, we're running through the morning's top stories, including the lane closures and construction changes happening around town today and well into your work week. And then what's in the perfect pint? Beer brewers are going to extraordinarily length, extraordinary lengths Paying attention to not only what's going on in your canner bottle, but on the label outside of it. We'll take you along to the brewery just ahead.
From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. It's July 14th. I'm Christina Laurie. We'll get a check on weather with Chris in just a second, but first, here are three things to know as you start your day. The search for a missing father of three will continue at 10 o'clock this morning. The man went missing around 9 o'clock Saturday morning just below the Prairie de Sac Dam after trying to save his three kids in the Wisconsin River. The sheriff's office there says the kids swam out too far but eventually made it back to shore with their mother. Alliant Energy lowered the dam flow to allow divers to search for eight hours yesterday. Calling all Badger fans, you can start planning which games you'll be jumping around at later this week. Single game football tickets go on sale at 8.30 tomorrow morning. The Badgers' home schedule includes some huge Big Ten matchups, including welcoming the Michigan Wolverines to Madison on September 21st. I'm not sure there'll be a whole lot of welcoming there. And Iowa on November 9th. The first game at Camp Randall this year is September 7th against Central Michigan. The Badgers kick off their season on the road at South Florida just a little more than a month from now on August 30th. And a reminder for Beltline drivers, westbound traffic is going to be limited to two lanes all weekend long from Fish Hatchery Road to Seminole Highway. One lane is being shut down while crews continue their work on the bridge over Todd Drive. The DOT says you can expect delays during the day. The ramp onto the westbound belt line at Fish Hatch will be closed until 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. And it's going to be a hot, 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 wet day outside and really all week. Yeah, especially as we go through the week ahead. This weekend, some of the cooler days compared to what's to come later. But we're already starting out on a milder note. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Mineral Point at 72. Prairie du Chien at 71. And generally, we'll find those warmer temperatures closer towards the Mississippi River. As you work your way over towards the lake shore, that's where things are just a little bit cooler. We're coming in in the 60s right now. Manitowoc at 62. That's thanks to some drier air blowing in off of Lake Michigan and oddly enough that drier air has kept things just a little bit cooler on the eastern half of the state. Madison is at 70. Our dew point is at 60. That air is relatively drier compared to the higher dew points that'll be coming our way right now. The dew points right on the nose of noticeable and a bad hair day, but things get downright uncomfortable to tropical as we go through the rest of today and then especially into the week ahead. Check out these higher dew points to the west. All of that's going to be coming our direction along with warmer temperatures. Thankfully, though, no showers or thunderstorms out there right now. There's a minor chance of a shower or thunderstorm I'm popping up today, but most of us should be dry. Now, Christina, you were creeping back in. Let's go ahead and <laughs> throw things back over to you. I was practicing my don't talk to me. Yes. I don't want to hear this We've got to practice. <laughs> <laughs> you caught me off guard. Thanks, Chris. My pleasure. Well, around the state, a three-year-old Milwaukee girl is dead, shot after a possible road rage incident. Now, this happened on the city's north side just after 8.30 Sunday morning. Officers say the suspect shot at the car with a mother and her four young children inside after the two cars nearly collided. The suspect led officers on a chase until he eventually lost control and crashed. He tried to run away but was eventually taken into custody. Milwaukee police are now outraged. And we have a three-year-old dead. Every one of you should be just as angry and upset about this as I am. Police say the other children in the car were ages one, two, and four years old. They haven't released the identity of the little girl or the suspect just yet. New this morning, the Trump administration and ICE officials are preparing to target more than 2,000 recently arrived migrant families starting today. These families have already been ordered by a judge to be deported. Most do not have a criminal history. The raids will be conducted over multiple days through July 18th, and they will include what's called collateral deportations, meaning undocumented migrants who happen to be on the scene but aren't the intended target could also be subject to detention. They're going to take people out and they're going to bring them back to their countries or they're going to take criminals out, put them in prison or put them in prison in the countries they came from. While large scale deportations are not uncommon, most don't receive this type of publicity. This one is getting pushed back from cities with large immigrant populations like San Francisco. Two hours away from us here in Madison, many Chicagoans are also among the people upset. Passionate protesters took to the streets in the city, joining those across the country. Do undocumented immigrants like Garrison Quinteros are on edge, speaking out this morning about how they feel. Sheriff's deputies are also sharing advice for immigrant families. 
I feel like scared every day. I don't know what to do, but I know that with my community, I'm in strength. Keep your doors shut and uh, ask for a search warrant. And if they don't have it, well, then don't open the door. Estimate there could be close to 1 million undocumented immigrants in this country alone, and local law enforcement here is refusing to help federal agents with any immigration arrests. Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers retweeted out a warning about the raids last night. He said, quote, ICE raids will be taking place starting tomorrow, meaning today. Know your rights. No Wisconsin city is on the list of the 10 U.S. cities expecting ICE raids. The closest city to us is Chicago. Over in Los Angeles, a summertime specialty is for sale with a special purpose. Dozens of kids and their parents are teaming up this weekend to sell lemonade, but these stands have a special meaning. We're helping people coming from like Mexico and different places to have like a safe place in the United States. To actually support kids and parents and moms and dads who are in the U.S. detention camps right now. The parents involved say it's important to teach their kids compassion while also keeping them informed about what's going on in our country. Time now, 734. Craft beer makers go to extraordinarily lengths to brew up the perfect pint. And lately, that attention to detail has shifted to what's on the outside as well. Kenneth Craig takes a look at how beer labels are becoming a big part of that business. When it comes to the art of beer, there are few on the same playing field as Hetty Topper. For years, the can has been one of the most sought after in the world. The double IPA inside among the highest rated and its cover art for craft beer fans among the most recognizable. And did people react right away when they, when they saw the art on the can? Oh, Absolutely. <laughs> Jen and John Kimmich right are the founders of the Alchemist Brewery in Vermont and say that label was a collaboration with artist and musician Dan Blakesley. Some walking so tall. Whose concert posters captured John's attention at a Vermont coffee shop. What he said to me was he liked the whimsical nature of it. He was hired he to do the art for the brewery simple. and then the label for Hetty Topper. The one we actually used, he was like, okay, side profile of a guy with a beard, you know, the, the hops exploding out of his head everywhere. The number of craft breweries nationwide has more than tripled in the past 10 years. And now brewers are not only in a race to make the best tasting beers, they're also competing for your eye. So this one uh, is called Tropical Crumble. Designing uh, those cans has become a full-time job for uh, Megan Penman. It's, it's been crazy. <laughs> it's a who has created more than 300 labels for Other Half Brewing in Brooklyn, New York, which releases upwards of four new cans every week. It's wild to see it out there in the world and see people with it. There are entire social media accounts dedicated to the craft of craft beer labels. More than 150,000 followers track Other Half and its art on the brewery's Instagram account. You want the, the beers flying this way, right? So the team at The Alchemist it, has continued their work with Dan on other so cans cool. since the release of their Reverse famed damage. beer. They say their art and beer have always gone hand in hand. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Stowe, Vermont. Time for a fun beer fact about our state. According to the Huffington Post, Wisconsin comes in third in the number of bars per capita, and it has nearly three times more bars than grocery scores. Go figure. Well, time now, 737. Eating healthy and being happy. Sometimes we think the two can't go hand in hand, but they do. Registered dietitian Tammy Schiltz joins us this morning to share her favorite healthy eating tool and Hint, hint, it's something we already use every day. That's next.
temperatures this morning, not too bad for a July morning. We're starting out mainly in the 60s and 70s for a lot of folks. Mineral Point at 73 degrees right now in Madison. We find our temperature right at the 70 degree mark as we speak. Jane's still at 69 or 68 rather. As we go throughout the day, we'll reach the mid 80s by lunchtime. We'll top out around 90 and I can't rule out an isolated shower or storm mainly towards the western part of the state. We'll do this again tomorrow and throughout further notice with temperatures well into the 90s. Christina. Thanks, Chris. Well, it's no secret that people living here in Wisconsin know how to do summer right with backyard barbecues, festivals, and weekend getaways. But all that fun in the sun can make healthy eating a challenge. Registered dietitian Tammy Schultz is here with us today to talk about her fa favorite healthy eating tool that will allow you to still enjoy all the taste of summer without forgetting your health goals. Good morning, Tammy. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So we have some pretty cool fake food in front of us <laughs> we this do. morning. It is pretty but fun. We're going to talk about the, this is all stuff that we all love and we want to eat. Yeah. But how do we do so and not totally blow? Absolutely. So my favorite tool is our plate. And I know that seems kind of silly and simple, but really this is all about freedom within boundaries. And so when we go to these family functions or events is we can kind of use this plate to kind of help us eyeball things. And so I brought a visual so people can kind of break it down a little bit more, but this is how it works. So you've got half a plate of your vegetables. And I know some people are like, ooh, wait, what if I don't have vegetables at my meals already? I just ask that you invite them to the party and let them be involved and have some fun too. And little by little, maybe you're starting to get to that half a plate worth. And then the other section, you've got a quarter plate for whatever proteins you want. So if you're grilling out and you've got burgers, steaks, or you know, chicken, that type of stuff can go there and then whatever carbohydrate you want here. So if you're doing breads, rice, pastas, you know, uh, pasta salads, potato salads, desserts. So it allows you to have all of that. And so you can still have it all. Yes. Just you want to be mindful. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And I think that's where we get into over the, the holiday weekends or summer is we're really good during the week and on the weekends it's kind of that splurge. And this allows us to still kind of maintain some of those healthy habits because you can have those once in a while foods. Do your recommendations vary any from the typical like food pyramid that we all learned back in school? Yes, I think way back when it has shifted since and there really is the emphasis on vegetables and really any like diet or program that you're going to follow is going to emphasize that. And so if I'm going to like a large, you know, like family reunion or something like that where there's a huge table full of food, what I encourage people to do is just instead of like starting at the line and being like, oh, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good, is to take a step back first and kind of look at it, see what's there and be like, oh, I really want that, that looks really good. And that way when they go through the line, they can kind of fill up their plate. And so we, we know that we always want the vegetables, which this can be the hard part because this isn't always what people bring to those types of things. But I always encourage people like, you bring the veggie dish. Like you can bring that dish to pass that way you know it's always gonna be there. And then like say you want, you know, a burger, you've got your bun and your, your burger there, so you're good to go. Or if you're wanting, you know, chicken this time, you can do that pasta cell that you are eyeing up. You could do the baked beans for your carbohydrate. If you want to load up on a bunch of that fruit over the summer, which is great. Or if you're like me, you're going to probably put your dessert there. Like <laughs> so, me as well. Yes, I'm a total desserts person. So this has really <laughs> allowed me to not have that like forbidden food thinking where it's like, I can't have that or I can't have this. It's like, no, I can. I'm just going to be more proactive about it. That way, when I'm done eating, I'm not feeling like, oh, I shouldn't have eaten that or oh, I've eaten too much is because I've really created that healthy balance. And we're almost out of time, but the yeah. same goes for kids too, except their plate is just a little bit smaller portions, right? Right, and I love this plate. This is actually my daughter's. <laughs> she knows oh. that we have those three things. I don't get so caught up on this being like the vegetables for her. Mm -hmm. I just want those three things there. And so when I give her choices of like, hey, we've got peppers, carrots, broccoli, she can choose and it makes kind of meal planning so much less stressful. And she just knows that that's how it goes. And it's fun. Thank you so much. It's Thank you. such a simple, Tool, everyone does have a plate. Right, we all have so. plates. Just freedom within boundaries. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'm gonna have to find a way to fit ice cream into my meal plan moving forward, especially on a hot day like this. We're, uh, temperature is climbing well into the 90s. You're taking a live look over the Capitol right now. Chris is back with your full forecast next on News 3 Now this morning. But first, if you have a little kid turning three soon, please let us know so we can show their picture right here on TV.
Well, we did it again. Temperatures made it into the low 90s or highs yesterday across large parts of Wisconsin, including Madison for the third time so far this year. Janesville made it to 90, Milwaukee 91, Kenosha 92. We're going to do this again, likely several times in a row as we go through the week ahead. We're starting out this morning just a little bit cooler. That's because winds are coming off of Lake Michigan. That allowed for some drier air overnight and allowed for temperatures to cool down a little bit more as well. But we're already warming back up. 70 right now in Madison, Mineral Point, and Bosco Bell, both at 73. Generally, those temperatures are just a little bit warmer towards Lake, or not Lake Michigan, but uh, the Mississippi River. That's also where we do see the the dew points being higher as well. Already seeing those dew points into the tropical range near Mineral Point and Platteville. Things are a little bit drier for us, but again, that's thanks to the winds coming in off the lake. In time, these winds are going to be changing. And so by the time we get you through late tonight and into your Monday morning, watch these winds coming out of the south and west. And they're going to be a strong wind coming out of the south and west as well. Folks, that strong southwesterly wind is going to be tapping into all of this tropical moisture across the upper Midwest and bringing that in to southern Wisconsin. So things are only going to get more humid from where they are right now. Now, all that tropical moisture is not bringing any showers and thunderstorms for us right now, but we are still watching the remnants of what was Hurricane Barry over parts of Louisiana. Still a lot of heavy rain pouring in off of the Gulf of Mexico, but expect that heavy rain to continue throughout the Mississippi River Valley going through the next couple of days, eventually towards the Ohio River Valley in due time. So if you're headed down south, there will be lots of rain chances there. For us, things won't be as unsettled. I can't rule out some isolated rain chances at times, but most of us will stay dry. Look for those highs around 90 degrees this afternoon. Then tomorrow, we do it again, but we get even warmer. Temperatures will likely be around that 93 to 95 degree range for a lot of folks here in Wisconsin. Then you fact. Excuse me, then you factor in the humidity and here's how it's going to feel. We're talking triple digit feels like temperatures uh, for a lot of folks around here, not just today, but as we go into Monday as well and then likely continuing through the rest of the week. So it's important to just keep your heat safety in mind because heat causes more fatalities than any other weather related hazard. In fact, 136 people died last year due to the heat. Also, keep in mind just to stay hydrated, take Take frequent breaks and limit your activity outdoors, especially if that activity is going to be strenuous. And I need you to do that for the rest of the forecast period, folks. Alert days for all 10 days and our forecast. A cool down will come this fall. Optimism. You said, you said it was winter. Now it's fall. We're progressing. We're, we're progressing. We're progressing. I, that's hoping that winter doesn't stay warm and fall like. I don't know, but a cool down will come eventually. That's what I know. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> My Chris. pleasure. Well, there's more news ahead all day long here on News 3 Now. And then tomorrow morning, we're heading out to the lakes, diving into the new city county state effort to keep our waterways clean. Those lakes are sounding extra good with today's heat. But first, coding and choreography, teaching technology with a literal twist. However you put it, a new program is helping young girls find their passion through expression. That story just ahead. Thanks for watching.
Welcome back. A corporate executive is spending his Saturdays teaching technology with a literal twist. The name of this program is Dance Logic. For one hour, girls between the ages of 13 to 17 dance, and then they spend the next hour learning how to code. Jerika Duncan found out how two concepts go hand in hand. One, two, three, four. Numbers. So from right here, right? Steps. And creativity are integral parts of choreography and coding. With dancing, you have to look at the steps and figure out how do they fit into one another. Same with coding. 14-year-old Naila Shabazz is part of Dance Logic, a program in Philadelphia that combines dance and computer programming or coding. Basically, if I see myself coding and helping others, I think I can also bring in other people who look like me to also want to pursue that field as well. This is 14-year-old Lauren Dorsett's second year. She admits the dancing part came easy. The coding part is sort of hard at first. So when you found out how much you could potentially make later on in life with these skills, you thought what? I thought I should look more into this because not all fields offer the same type of opportunities. You can get far with this. And opportunity is everything, says Franklin Atheus. He's a senior vice president at Comcast who started Dance Logic in 2018. No, I had no idea what it was going to turn out to be. Because originally you wanted to focus just on coding, right? Exactly. But his friend and co-founder, Betty Lindley, who runs a cultural center, suggested he incorporate dance. We're trying to find the hook, because coding alone doesn't bring the hook. All right? And it worked. The dance was getting them to come back to the class. According to the Pew Research Center, women hold just 25% of computer-related occupations in the U.S. New research projects that number could fall to 22% by 2025. You're a senior vice president of a major corporation, and you're taking your Saturdays to help young girls. You could be doing so many things, I'm sure. Why do you think it's so important to give back? I came from a very rough neighborhood. Right. And someone introduced me to something that kept me out of trouble. If I can help motivate some other person to do the same thing and show them it's not that hard, right, that's the reward I get out of this. And when the girls finish the 14-week program, they are rewarded. You now have an iPad. Atheist gives them iPads so they can keep coding. He has no doubt they'll definitely keep on dancing. Jerika Duncan, CBS News. That's a neat program, but we're already in vacation mode. I mean, I at know. least you are. I'm living through you. I, I'm headed south to get <laughs> away from the heat. Oddly enough, things are going to be a lot cooler as you work your way down south. But for us, it is going to be hot, hot, hot. Temperatures will be in the 90s each and every day. Heat indices will likely be well into the triple digits. While we're on vacation, we might as well get rowdy. Speaking of rowdy, that's your pet walk and Lake Delton today. Temperatures around 3 o'clock will be near 88. Expect those highs right around 90 degrees this afternoon. I like how you said we're on vacation. I'm not going on vacation <laughs> for the record, but I, I'll gladly live through yours. I, yeah, I was going to say I thought you were living through my <laughs> vacation. Have fun at Weather Camp, Chris, and have a great day, everyone.